Okay, so we're going to go ahead now and look at 3.1 today. So we're going to be looking at 3.1, and we're going to be talking more specifically about the squaring function. So let's review how we would graph this function. If I gave you this to graph, let's see what it would look like. We covered these on our exam. Last class break. So if I gave you this, what we covered last time on our exam was we looked at questions like this. Now let's look at this one and let's graph this function. Now we know it should be a squaring function, right? Because this is squared here. And remember our translations. So this negative one, opposite of what you think it's going to do. So that's going to move it to the right one unit. This five will move it up. And that means that we are going to now start at positive one comma five, right? Nothing new. When I go to graph this, what does this now look like? Well, when I go to graph it, I am going to start at one five. So that is right there. And then what does that three represent? That is like your slope. So that is up three and over one. So up one, two, three, and over one, and up and over. And so there is my graph. Now, specifically where we started at, when we talk about a squaring function, that is called the vertex. So in this case, our vertex is 1, 5. Okay? So where we start at, that is now going to be referred to as the vertex when we talk about squaring functions. Let's do another one of these where we find our vertex. The next one we're not even going to graph because the vertex is the highest or the lowest point. So where it starts at, that is going to be your vertex. Okay. So that's our vertex specifically for the squaring function. 3.1 is about nothing but the squaring function. So let's do another one. And this one we're not even going to graph. I'm just going to have you find the vertex. Okay, so I'm just going to have you find the vertex here. So I'm not going to have you graph this one. I'm just going to have you find that vertex. Well, that plus 2, what is that going to do? That plus 2, opposite of what you think it's going to do, that's going to move it backwards, isn't it? And do we have a number on the end? No. So where are we going to start at now? We are going to start at negative 2 comma 0. And this is also called the vertex. Where you start at is also called the vertex. So in this case, our vertex is where we start again. And that is minus 2 comma 0. Now these, we could see how to find the vertex pretty easily, right? By looking at our translations. However, if I give you a different polynomial, we can't do that. If I give you this, let's say I want to find the vertex here. Let's say I give you f of x equals, how about x squared? And let's do a... 4x and a plus 5 here. Okay. Now, this one, we can't apply our formula like we did earlier. Why not? Well, we cannot apply our formula 
because it's not grouped like this. This has the four pieces. Now, remember when we did the quadratic formula? Okay, remember when we did the quadratic formula, we had our A, B, and our C. We're going to label our pieces like they're going in the quadratic formula. So this is your A, that is your B, and that is your C. Now, we need our vertex formula, and here's our vertex formula. Your vertex is now h comma k with h being minus b over 2a and k is going to be f of h. So this is a new formula. It's kind of like what we did with the quadratic formula. All right? It's quite a bit simpler. But let's go ahead now and find our vertex here. So what are our pieces when I label them? Well, if we look up here, my A is 1, my B is 4, right? And my C is 5. So let's find our H. H is minus B over 2A. So that's going to be minus 4 over... 2 times 1, which is then a minus 2. Thank you, Claudia. So that's our H. And that's the first half of our vertex. Now, how do we then find the K? Well, K, what we do is we take whatever we found and we plug it into our function. Right? We want to find F of H. So whatever we find here, we plug it back into our function. So we're going to now find f of negative 2. And f of negative 2 would be, when we plug it back in, a negative 2 squared plus 4 times a negative 2 plus 5. So that is then, watch your signs, a positive 4 minus 8 plus 5. And that comes out to then be 1. So what is my vertex now? My vertex is HK, and that would be minus 2, comma, 1. So your vertex is always HK. How do we find our H? H is minus B over 2A, and whatever value we find, we plug that in to your original function to get the K. Oh, sure. Let me just pass this out real quick. Okay, so which piece now? And we're going to do several examples. Uh, which piece are we looking at? Yeah, this is actually your K. Okay, so this is the K here. So whatever value we find, we take it and we plug it back in. Let's do another one. So here's another one that we're going to look at. Let's do a plus 64x in the middle. Right. So let's try to find our vertex. Now, once we understand how to find the vertex, then we'll talk about how to actually graph them. We need to make sure we get the vertex first. Okay, so first off, it's not condensed down in any not any quantity squared, so we need to get our A, our B, and our C. So this is your A, this is your B, and this is your C. 
Now, our formula is H equals minus B over 2A. So let's go ahead and get that piece. All right, so that's going to now be a minus 64 over 2 times the 4 there. And that's minus 64 over 8, and that reduces down to then a negative 8. Is everyone okay with that piece? All I did was I just plugged my A and my B into my formula here. Watch out, it's negative, so if it's positive or negative, you switch your signs. And that gave me that piece. Now, once we have the H, how do we find the K? Remember, K is F of H, which in this case is F of negative 8. And so then we'll plug that negative 8 in to our original function. And we'll work it out. So whatever value you find, you just plug it back in. Be careful with your signs. Remember, when you square a negative, what happens to it? It becomes positive. So 8 squared, that makes it a 64 times 4. So that is a 256. And then we've got 64 times a negative 8. That's a negative 512 plus 15. You put those together. 256 minus 512 plus 15, that leaves you then with a minus 241, and that is your K, and what does your vertex now look like? Your vertex is now negative 8, that's your H, comma negative 241, that is your vertex. Let's try a, one more of these, and then we're going to look at graphs. So let's do one more of these. Let's put a minus in the middle this time. Let's do a minus, how about a minus 4x there? So this one's going to have smaller numbers, and this one has a negative, so the signs are going to be different. Because different from the last one, because that double negative is going to make that positive. That's our A, that's our B, and that's, that's our C. What's our formula? H equals now minus B over 2A. And we're going to go ahead and fill this in. Negative B, so that's a negative of a negative 4. Watch your signs there. Divided by 2 times that 2, because that's your A there, 2A. Double negative makes this now what? Positive. So that is now 4 over 4 which is then what? 1. How do we finish this out? Well, we now take that 1 that we have, and how do we find our k? We take our 1 and we plug it in. So we need f of 1. And we're going to plug that in, and that's going to be 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 9. So that's 2 minus 4 plus 9. So that's 11 minus 4. So that should be then a 7, isn't it? Because we have 2 minus 4 plus 9. Yep, that comes out to be 7. And what does that vertex now look like as an ordered pair? Thank you, Chase. And did you have the homework packet yet? Oh, All right, let's find it real quick here. Um, well, we're learning the material, so you can stay if you'd like. 
I, I probably recommend that you, it, that, that you stay for the new material, but you can do whatever you like. We just started it. So what's our vertex going to now be? Well, as an ordered pair, remember that's HK, so that's going to be 1, comma, positive 7. So it's pretty easy to use our formula. Now I'm going to have you look at some of these graphs, and we're going to determine, I gave you a lot of them, I gave you several of them. We're going to use the vertex formula and what we know about parabolas and the squaring functions to decide which of these graphs is correct. I'm not going to make you graph them completely out. I gave you several of these. I gave you three of them. I'm probably going to work two of these out. And I'll leave one of them for you to look at from your homework. So now let's use what we've just learned to look at question number four. Yep, and this is going to be question four from your homework. 3.1 and 3.2. We're going to look here at question four. Now, we're going to be graphing these. And there are a couple of pieces that are going to let us find the correct graph. So the first thing we want to look at is we see our power. Now, what's our highest power? Our highest power is a square. Okay? So that tells us that our graph is going to be a U. Now, let's look at our X squared here. And what's in front of the X squared? That's a negative. So since that is negative, that means that it's going to open down. So it's going to look in a way like that. Okay? We know that. So let's begin first by finding our vertex. And again, what's our vertex? Well, we need our A, our B, and our C. A, watch your signs here is a negative 1, B is positive 2, and C is that negative 6. So H is going to be now a minus B, so that's a minus 2 over 2 right, times a minus 1, minus B over 2A, that gives you a negative 2 over negative 2, which is then what? Positive 1. Now, what do we do with that positive 1? To get the K, we plug it back in. So K is now going to be F of 1. And be very careful with your signs here. So we have minus 1 squared. Now, the negative is outside the parentheses plus 2 times 1 minus 6. So 1 squared is 1, but that negative comes down. So that's a minus 1 there. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 6 when we put them all together. That gives you a minus 7 plus 2. That leaves you then with a negative 5. So what is my vertex? If I did it correctly, my vertex should be 1 comma 1 negative 5. Now, let's use process of elimination to see if we can't eliminate a couple of these graphs. Okay, so what you want to do on these is see what we've got and see if we can eliminate. Okay, so what was our vertex? Our vertex is 1 comma what? Negative 5. This one's a possibility, right? Why is this one a possibility? 
because that point right there is about 1, negative 5. This one won't work. Why not? Because that's at minus 1, minus 5. So we know B can't happen. Okay, is everyone okay with how I did that? So we found our vertex. We used process of elimination there. Now let's look at the last two choices. Okay, now, why can I eliminate the last two choices? Right, because what do we know? When we look at this squaring function, when we looked at this squaring function, what did it begin with? It began with a negative, right? So what is that going to make it do? That is going to make it go upside down. So what can we now do? We can eliminate C and D. Does everyone see how I was able to eliminate them? Why can I eliminate C and D? Because they're going up, right? And what's our power at the very beginning? It's a, a squared, so it's a U. It's a negative in front, so it has to go down. So these two can be eliminated. Now, we know it's going to be answer A. Let's do one more quick check. Look at the ending point here. What is that value? That is minus 6. So that means we're going to have to go down 6 units from the origin. So look right here. See how it crosses right there? Okay, that's where, that's your y-intercept. Right? And that's going to be 0, comma, negative 6. So there's three things to check. You find your vertex, which we did. Then we look at the sign in front. It makes it open down. Then we look at our graph. What number's on the end? Negative 6. That means it better cross that y-axis here at negative 6. This one does as well, but this one doesn't work because your vertex is what? Is wrong. I'm going to do question five, and I am then going to leave question six for you to do on your own. Okay, so let's now, let's now look at question five. Same concepts here. So question five, we have y, and it can be y, it can be f of x, it doesn't matter y equals 4x squared minus 2x minus 8. So what do we know about this? This 4 is positive, so that means it's going to have to open up. So that means the graph has to look like that. Okay, that's the first thing I do is I look at the number in front of your x squared. If it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. Let's go ahead and find our vertex. Here's our A, our B, and our C. All right, so just make sure we know with our signs here, A is a positive 4, B is a negative 2, C is a negative 8. What's your formula? Well, your formula is h equals minus b over 2a. Be very careful with the double negatives. So that's a minus of a minus 2 over 2 times 2. The double negative here makes this now what? Positive. And so that is 2 over 2 times 2, which is 4. And 2 over 4, that reduces down to 1. A half. Oh, did I plug the... Uh, let's see, did I make... Yeah, I made a mistake. This should be a 4 here. Should be, sorry about that. Because it's, remember, minus B, which is here. Double negative makes it positive. Over 2 times A. So that's 2 times your 4. And so that's going to make that an 8. Sorry about that. That was my mistake. 
and that reduces down to be then what? One fourth. Is everyone okay with that? Now, when we go to find our K, we can use the decimal equivalent if you want. So if you struggle with the fractions, you can use the decimal equivalent. And we know that one-fourth is equal to what? Is equal to 0 0.25. So now to find our K, we plug that in. Plug that in for X. So that's going to be 4 times 0 0.25 quantity squared minus 2 times 0 0.25 minus 8. So if you struggle with the fractions, just make it a decimal. Not that important on these, because all we're trying to do is match up the graph. So 0.25, okay, we'll square that. And multiply that by 4, and that gives you 0 0.25 there. Then we have 0.25, right, times a negative 2. Well, that makes it a minus 0 0.5. And you've got a minus 8, put those together. And that's 0.25, right? Minus 0.5, minus 8. Well, that comes out to be a minus 0 0.2. Oh, sorry, minus 8 point. Let me say it correctly. Minus 8.25. And so what does your vertex look like? As an ordered pair, our vertex looks like about 1 fourth or 0 0.25 either way. You can use a decimal here, and a minus 7.25 here. And you can use a decimal or a fraction, it doesn't matter. Now, let's look at our choices. Let's see which ones we can clearly eliminate. First off, why can I eliminate answer C? Yeah, it's going upside down, isn't it? Okay, so C is gone automatically because it's going upside down. So we know that one's done. Now let's look at A. Is A going to work for us? I don't think so because where's our vertex need to be at? Okay, our vertex is a 0 0.25 or about 0, give or take a little bit, down about 9. 8, 9, somewhere in that region. That one is clearly not there, is it? Right? Our vertex is right here. That's the highest or the lowest point. That's way too far over. Why does B not work? It's way too high, isn't it? Right? Because this one would actually be about 0 0.25 comma 8.25 there. And that's not what we want because ours is what? Negative. And then we come down and we look at D. And if we look at our vertex, right, our vertex is right about there. And that's about at 0 0.25 or a fourth and a minus 8.25. Now, we can also check it because what's our number on the end? Our number on the end is negative 8. So we had better have 0, negative 8 on the graph. And right about here, I know it's hard to see, but right about there, well, that's got 0, comma, negative 8 in it as well. So there's the three things that you need to make sure you check. You need to check the direction, if it's going up or down. You need to find your vertex. That's going to eliminate some other choices. And then check your y-intercept, the number on the end. All right, whatever number that is, that's how far down you go. Is everyone okay with those now? I worked out two of them. So all you need to look at is question six. When we look at question six, I'm not going to finish it, but is question six, is this going to be opening up or down? Down, right? 
So you can eliminate several of them already. You can eliminate B. Why can you eliminate B? It's going up, right? It needs to open down. And then you can figure out which one it is from there. But B is gone because it's going up. Now, we'll also look at some applications. These are just finding the vertex, but we'll just do two quick applications. Find a couple of these for us to look at, and these are pretty simple to look at as well. We're going to be finding the vertex here. Let's look at one of these. Okay. Now when we talk about when we talk about vertex, that's your maximum or the minimum. And and what I mean by that is let's just look here at this picture. This point is the highest this graph ever goes. Right? So this would be a maximum. This is your vertex on this one right here, and this is a minimum because it's the lowest point. So your vertex is either a maximum or a minimum. Now, whenever we need to find the maximum or the minimum value, that's just simply finding the vertex. So let's look at question 75, and this is on page 338. And all we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding our maximum or minimum value, our vertex. So page 338, we're going to look here at question 75. And I've, I've got it, so if you don't have your textbook with you, that's fine. I'll put it up on the screen here. So we're going to be trying to find the minimum food truck cost. So we have a, a function here that represents how much it costs to run a food truck. And it says daily cost for a food truck business that sells pizza by the slice are approximated by this quadratic function. So here's our function where C of X is the cost in dollars to sell X slices of pizza. Find the number of slices of pizza that should be sold to minimize the cost. What is the minimum cost? Now, whenever we say maximum or minimum, maximum or minimum is your vertex. So we are going to be looking at the vertex here. So that's where we're going to begin. begin. So we're going to take this function and we're going to find our vertex. And then we're going to label it and we're going to answer the question. So they gave you the function here. I'm going to plug this out. We're going to, we're going to find the minimum value. So we've got C of X and this is a 0 0.0012 8x squared minus 0 0.64x plus 200. We're going to find our vertex. So this is your A, this is your B, and this is your C. We can use a calculator because these are all decimals here. So let's find our H. Our H is minus B over 2A. And so that's going to be, watching your signs here, a minus, a minus 0 0.64 over 2 times 0 0.00128. We're going to need a calculator here. To evaluate this down, so we've got 0.64, double negative makes this now a what? 
positive, so that's 0 0.64 in the numerator. Let's work with our denominator. 2 times 0 0.00128, that is 0 0.00256, and we'll divide those out. And that comes out to be, oh, thank you very much, 250. Okay, so that comes out to be 250. Now, we need to also find our K. And K is going to be C of that 250. So we're now just going to plug these values into our calculator. We'll definitely need a calculator for this one because the values are so large. So that's what we're looking at here. We're going to use our calculator now. Plug this value in. Okay, so I'm going to do each piece individually and put them together. So we've got 250. We're going to have to square it. And then multiply that by 0 0.00128. That comes out to be 80. Then over here, we've got... 0 0.64 times 250, that's a negative, and so that's a minus 160. Add on your 200. Now we've got 80 minus 160 plus 200. That comes out to be 120. And what does your vertex look like? And your vertex, again, is HK. So that's going to be 250, comma, 120. Now, what do the values mean? If we go back and we look here at our formula, and I'll, I'll move it in just a second. C of X, that's your Y, that's the cost. X is the number of pizza slices. So X represents the slices of pizza. Y is the cost. Okay, so that's what they are defined to be. So this one's going to be your, your number of, of slices of pizza. This is going to be the cost. So what does the question ask here? It says, find the minimum number of slices of pizza that should be sold. Or so, sorry, find the number of pieces, slices of pizza that should be sold to minimize the cost. We did that. So this is your 250 here. So we have 250 slices of pizza. And a minimum cost of $120. So that is the answer. 250 slices of pizza. Minimum cost is 120. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, this is used a lot in decision making by businesses. You might want to figure out what's going to minimize my cost. How many employees do I need for the minimum cost? And something like this would tell you how many employees I need to keep on hand. So big companies like Walmart, Target, McDonald's, they run models like this to figure out how many employees I need. And they do a minimum. Or they might do a maximum. What's the maximum profit that I can make? With the number of employees. If you have too many employees, then you start losing money. If you don't have enough, you can't make enough food, so you lose money. So there's a trade-off. So large companies, they have models like this, and they do maximum and minimums all the time to figure out how many employees do I have to keep to make the maximum number of profit. If I don't have enough employees, I may not make enough sales. If I have too many employees, then I may just have too many, and that's cost we mean labor. So that's, that's what these companies do, is they have models like this, and they're constantly looking at maximum minimums. 
The last part that we need to talk about is actually 3.2, and this is in the same, in, in the same homework part, 3.1 and 3.2. And 3.2, we're going to talk about synthetic division and how to evaluate a polynomial. So let's start with this one. And let's try to evaluate this down. Let's say I want you to find f of 3. Now, how would you find f of 3? This is pretty easy. We've done these before. I'm going to show you a shortcut once we see how it's done. So you see what the answer should be. And then we'll talk about the shortcut called synthetic division. So if I say find f of 3, well, we would just plug 3 in. And 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 5. We put that together, and I believe that should be 22. So we have 18 plus 9, that's 27. Minus 5, that's 22. Okay. And that's how we would normally do it. Now we're going to learn how to, to use synthetic division to get the same result. This is an easy one, but sometimes they have a larger number of terms, and this way wouldn't work. So I'm going to have you use what's called the remainder theorem to find your value. So let's try to find this using synthetic division, using the remainder theorem. So we're going to use synthetic division. Now, when we use synthetic division, they give you a k. So we're going to use the same k. In this case, our k is 3. So the number in there, that's your k. So our k is 3. And then we write our polynomial across the top. x squared, x, and then your value c at the end. So all we need is the numbers. Okay, and this is going to give us our same value. We're going to work through a couple of these that are easier ones. Then we'll look at a more complicated one. Okay, so let's, let's write at our values. Look at our values. What are our numbers? 2, 3, and minus 5. Now, here's our pattern. We take our k and we put it in front. And then we always start with the 0 down below. And we're going to be adding down. So 2 plus 0 is 2. 2 times 3 is what? Okay, 2 times 3 is 6. Then we add down. Took it, put it there. 3 plus 6, that makes it a 9. 3 times 9 is what? 27. When we add down, what does that give you for your result here? That gives you a result of 22. It's the same as what you got there. Okay. Uh, I can leave the library. Yep. And I'll make sure I tell them. I'll leave it in the library. Mm -hmm. So just talk with Virginia or Alyssa. Uh, the librarians. So Virginia or Alyssa. Alyssa. Okay, we always start with the zero. Now we're going to do another one. And we're going to do a lot of these. They're very easy. Once you see the pattern, you're going to see why we use synthetic division when we have a larger polynomial. Now we always, always start with the zero. That begins it. Okay, and then we add down and multiply, add down, multiply, add down. Let's do a larger one. So let's, let's try to do this one. We'll do this one by hand. And then I'll also use synthetic division, so you're going to see how much easier it is. I'm 
And let's try to find f of, let's do it with a pretty small number here, just so you see how difficult these can be. How about we plug in a negative 2? Okay, so this is not going to be that bad, but we have to watch our signs. Now, if I was going to do this the traditional way, what would I do? If I gave you this and I said find f of negative 2, what would you do? You'd plug that value in, right? Now, when you cube a number, it stays negative. When you square a number, it becomes positive and so on. So you've got to be very careful with the signs. So if I just said evaluate them down, this is what you would normally do. Right? You plug your value in. And this is a smaller number. Bless you. But yet it does become kind of difficult because we've got a cube. We've got to be careful with our signs. Okay, so let's work this one out the long way. And then I'll show you the shortcut with synthetic division. So negative 2 cubed. A okay, negative 2 cubed, watch your signs. Negative 2 cubed is a negative 8. What about negative 2 squared? Well, negative 2 squared is a positive 4. And then we can go ahead and work with this one. Negative and negative, well, that makes it a positive 4 there and a plus 4. And then we've got 3 times a negative 8. Well, 3 times a negative 8, that's a negative 24. And then we've got a plus 20, plus 4, plus 4, right? Adding all those together, we get 20 plus 4 plus 4 minus 24. Well, that comes out to then be what? 4. Okay. That was a little bit of work, wasn't it? Right. We had to be careful with our signs. There was lots of ways where we could make mistakes. We could make a mistake here. We could multiply wrong. Now let's do the same problem with synthetic division. So with synthetic division, they're going to give you a k value. And we're going to use that k as a negative 2. So that k is the value that goes in front. When we look at our synthetic division, we start with our highest power. So this is your x cubed. And then we've got our x squared. We've got our x. And then we've got our constant, the number on the end. We write up our coefficients, which are 3, 5, negative 2, positive 4. This negative 2, well, it goes in front. So that's going to go here with that negative 2. And we always, always begin with a 0. So that's what we always do is start with 0 there. Now we add down and multiply. That's our procedure. Add down, multiply. So 3 plus 0 is 3. Then we multiply. 3 times a negative 2. 3 times a negative 2. That's a negative 6. And then we add down. 5 minus 6 is a minus 1. Multiply. Negative 2 times negative 1. Negative and negative makes it a positive 2. Add down. Minus 2 plus 2. That's a 0. 0 times a negative 2. That's a 0. And we add down. And what does that give you? 4. See how it is exactly the same. Right? It's a little bit faster to use synthetic division for that one. Now, if I gave you more terms, it would be much easier to use synthetic division. So let's use the remainder theorem with synthetic division on this one. Okay, I'm going to give you a, a polynomial here. And how about I give you f of x equals, let's make it a larger one. How about 4x to the fifth plus 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus x minus 9. 
and I want you to find k of 3. Now, if I was going to just plug that value in, I would have to plug 3 in here, in there, in there, and there, and put it all together. Now, we also have to be very careful and make sure that we're not missing any parts. If we're missing a power, we've got to use a zero. And this one, I think we're missing a power. So let's draw our box. And what's our highest power? X to the fifth. So we've got X to the fifth. And we need an X to the fourth. X cubed. X squared. X. And then our constant value. Now, if you're missing a part, we're going to plug in a zero. So we've got 4 x to the fifth. Do we have any x to the fourths? No. So what are we going to put here? We're going to put what's called a placeholder. We're going to put a zero there. How many x cubes do we have? We have three of those. 2x squared. We have, there's no number in front of that x, so there's assumed to be a 1 there. And a negative 9. Now, what goes out in front is a 3. This one would take a while to do by hand. If we were doing this one by hand, we'd have to plug the 3 into all those. We'd have to take 3 to the 5th power. We'd have to take 3 cubed. We'd have to square it and everything else. This is a lot faster with synthetic division. Now, what do we always start with? We start with a 0. And what's our pattern? Add down, multiply. Add down, multiply. So adding down, that gives you a 4. 3 times 4 is a 12. Add down, 12. Multiply. 3 times 12, 3 times 12, that's a 36. The numbers get large, and that's okay. We have a calculator. Add down, that's 39. 3 times your 39, right? We're just multiplying here. 3 times that 39 that gives you that 117. Add down, that gives you 119. Now we've got 119 times 3. That's a 357. Add down, that's a 358. And our last piece here is 358 times 3 out in front, and that's a 1074. Add down, so take away 9 there, and that gives you the final answer of 1065. you do is add down and multiply. Let's do one more of these and then I'll pass out the sign-in sheet. So one more of these and I'll pass out the sign-in sheet and we'll be finished for today. So one more. This one's going to be a little bit larger and this one's going to have a negative in it as well. Again, use synthetic division here. And this one's going to be missing several different parts to it. Use a minus 3. So this minus 3, that's your k. We're going to find f of negative 3, so that's your k value. So we're going to be plugging in a negative 3. Now, every time we're missing a part, what do we plug in? Plug in a 0. So what are our, our powers? What's our highest power? Our highest power is x to the 6th. 
So we write them all down. We've got six, five, four, three, two, x, right? And then our constant. So we have four. We have no x to the fifths, no x to the fourths. We have five x cubed. We have a minus two x squared. We have no x's and we have a four, right? Everything has to be represented. If you're missing different parts, put a zero in for them. What goes out in front? That negative three. So this goes here. Always start off with a zero. That's starting our pattern. So we put the zero there. We add down. Four plus zero is what? Four. Four times a negative three? Negative 12. Add down, that's a negative 12. Negative and negative makes it positive. 12 times that 3, that's a 36. Add down, so that's a 36 again. 36 times a negative 3, that's a negative 108. Add down, so that's a minus 103. Double negative makes it positive here. And I'll just use a calculator so you can see what I'm doing. Right now we've got 103. Okay, we're going to multiply it by 3. It's 309. Negative and negative makes it a positive 309. Add down. That's 307. 307 times a negative 3. That's a negative 921. Add down. That's a minus 921. And what do we know about a negative 3 times a negative 921? A negative and negative makes it a what? Positive. And so that's 2763. We'll add down. So we'll add 4 to that, and that finishes it out. And so that is 2767. And that is your answer right there. Okay, that is your remainder. You can use synthetic division for other things as well. But the main place that we use synthetic division for is evaluating down polynomials. This is how a computer does it, is it uses synthetic division instead of plugging it in for the powers. And so that should now get you through 3, 1, and 3, 2. I'm going to go ahead and pass out the sign-in sheet. And so what's our homework for next class period? Well, our homework is 3.1 and 2, the first two. We've been combined, combined together, and you should be able to do them all.